Hi guys, welcome to the first ever episode of WP Bros Academy. I'm James Kusatari. And I'm Phil Sola. And in this episode, we're going to be introducing ourselves and talking about our journey as WordPress developers so far. We're going to be diving into Gutenberg and Gutenberg block development. We're going to be talking a little bit about full site editing and what that entails and everything in between, really. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Now, if you want to skip past some of the intro and discussion that's going to happen in this first video, why not head over to video two straight away? We'll put the link in the description below. And in the second video, we're going to dive straight in and start looking at the Gutenberg block editor in the back end of WordPress. So we're going to be showing you where you can find things like the setting sidebar, uh, the alignment toolbar, how to add and remove blocks, uh, and just how to navigate your way around the Gutenberg editor if you're not familiar with it. Um, but if you are going to hang around and stick around for the, the rest of this video, um, and then we're going to be talking a little bit about ourselves and our introduction and telling you what's to come in these upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. Let's go. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, up next, we're going to be introducing ourselves. So I'll kick us off. Um, so yeah, I've been building websites for about 10 years now and um, mainly in WordPress, the WordPress space. And um, our day-to-day -day job is just building websites really. So we work for an agency um, as developers and day in, day out, we're building websites and trying to find ways to improve our processes, um, build better sites for our clients, make the experience for, for them better when they're editing their website. Um, and yeah, just trying to improve as much as we can as developers, which is why we're now looking at building bespoke custom Gutenberg blocks. Um, so we can offer that experience for customers and just to make them run super fast and super efficiently. Um, Phil, do you want to Introduce sure, yourself. Yeah. yeah, so hi, I'm Phil and um, I work alongside James at the agency that we work at and pretty much James has covered it all really. But yeah, we, we literally build client websites day in, day out. And the whole purpose for diving into this is really just to share some of our knowledge really. Um, there's a lot of changes within the WordPress space that we might touch on through throughout this video later on. And um, th there's just a lot of areas, a lot of change going on at the moment where we feel that maybe we can add some value just by having these conversations and sharing some of our knowledge. So that's that's who we are and why we're creating this channel, really. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, our journey with, Word with WordPress so far, um, you probably can relate to everything we're, we're about to say. Um, but yeah, as, as WordPress developers and being in the space for quite a while, we've built websites in so many different ways. We've, we've used the template hierarchy system and, um, I mean, we still, we still do use that sometimes, but things like using page.php, front page.php archives and singles and all of those kind of things, which work great. And that's the way we've done it for a long time, but we've tried to improve upon that and we've looked at other looked down other avenues like page builders um which page builders have we tried phil um i mean we've looked at quite a few i know that we've used things like site origin across a few of our sites previously um one of our clients recently has been using oxygen when they came to us so we've dabbled in oxygen builder a little bit um, and had some discussions around that yeah um, but we kind of noticed fairly quickly that it wasn't really the way to go because with code blow and site speed not being its best when you're using a page builder plugin um, and also the client can make a mess of their website um, because they've got too much control. So we quickly realized that we needed to move away from that approach and we started looking at 
the ACF flexible content field type and building out almost like mini page builders, if you like, but using our own logic and styling. And we had some great results with that, didn't we, Phil? Yeah, it was really good. Um, managed to actually build some really complex page layouts and some really fantastic custom blocks for, for clients to, to build. Um, but as we probably can touch on, the editing experience, uh, unfortunately, just isn't isn't comparable with kind of, you know, native React blocks in Gutenberg now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. So we tried to bridge the gap with um, ACF blocks, which was pretty cool. And we got some great results with that. And not having to dive into learning React and brushing up on JavaScript all over again to actually to do it the right way with with the native React blocks, it just allowed us to kind of make it quicker for us to just jump jump in and, and get all of the benefits from the, the Gutenberg editor for us and for our clients um, without, yeah, like I said, having to learn all of that stuff. Um, what were the negatives of that approach though, Phil? Yeah, so um, I would say, obviously, it's great for, for getting up and running very quickly with, with Gutenberg. And I'm sure there'll be some developers watching this um, who have done exactly the same as us. But uh, instantly, you, you, you can tell, you know, when you compare against the, the core blocks um, that come with Gutenberg, the editing experience is much clunkier. You've got to toggle between your ACF fields and the actual editor um, to preview um, what you've just been building. And again, if you've got quite complex blocks, uh, I know for instance, we built out a fairly complex kind of query block where you can create cards of blog posts, custom post types, whatever, using WP query. Um, not the nicest editing experience for users because that can get quite confusing obviously adding a post thumbnail to your card adding titles adding meta um, and it just gets a bit messy over time um, also as well i think that i've certainly noticed since starting to work with react blocks there is a speed improvement to be had as well mm. oh yeah definite speed improvement um it's dramatic really how much of a speed improvement you get having to not query the database every single time um, you need to, to get a field value. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, with all of these benefits and obviously looking at the negatives of, of using ACF blocks, we realized we had to go full in on Gutenberg and learn React. And that's basically why we're bringing you these videos because we want to share with you our our knowledge and our experience along this journey um so yeah it's pretty much our journey so far so um gutenberg and full site editing um is the next thing we want to talk about so of course gutenberg is um, quite a big change for wordpress probably one of the biggest changes um wordpress had for a while i know gutenberg's been out for quite some time now but if you're anything like us, you, you might just be jumping in now for the first time. Um, and you've probably, probably had that classic editor plugin installed on all of your sites. Um, but yeah, I think now a lot of developers are ready to dive in and we're super excited about everything that Gutenberg has to offer. Um, especially for us as, as developers, because it levels the playing fields and allows us to build plugins and blocks and things that you couldn't do before because everything had already been built but now you've got this opportunity to really take control of your future and build some really amazing things yeah i think it's it's a very very exciting time for developers especially um there's, there seems to be two camps um uh, in WordPress world at the moment, where you've got the developers that are super now excited about Gutenberg and full site editing, diving into it, wanting to pick up JavaScript and React and all these other skills. Um, and then there's the other half that still really just don't like it. Um, I know, for instance, there's been um, 
a GitHub clone, um, a few versions back of the core WordPress, which is now something like classic press or something. <laughs> um, you know, they're so adamant against Gutenberg that they've gone and forked it into something different. Um, and a lot of people still use the classic plugin um, as well as we've touched on. So, you know, from our point of view, that's very much where we've been recently using the classic editor plugin and kind of trying to hide from Gutenberg. But actually, I feel that the time has come where Gutenberg's not going anywhere, full site editing's not going anywhere. This is part of the roadmap for where WordPress wants to be. And I think as a developer, you have two options at this moment in time. You can either go with it, upskill and learn all of the skills that you need. Or essentially you kind of bow out and, and go and look for a different tool or something like that, maybe. But, you know, I, I really feel that the, the time is now for people to, to dive into Gutenberg development. And hopefully, you know, with documentation being thin uh, at the moment, you know, videos and channels like ours will prove to be beneficial to other developers like us mm. that's my hope anyway yeah that's my hope too um so yeah you you briefly um touched on full site editing there um, and maybe we should just expand on that a little bit um for anyone who's not that familiar with what it is because it is very new and, and some people yeah. haven't heard about it yet so Full site editing is something that was introduced in, I, I believe, 5.8, wasn't it, Phil? Yeah, I think it was 5.8. And it's it's a massive change. Um, and at first, we was a little bit sceptical about it. And, I mean, we still are slightly, and we don't know everything about it yet. We're still looking into it. And it's, like I said, it's very new. So documentation is thin, and um, we're not sure exactly what the roadmap entails. And from what we can see it's going to pretty much change wordpress completely so instead of building sites the the, the standard way with php it's all shifting over to html and javascript yeah yeah it's, it's some huge changes to be honest um we're, we're definitely not experts in that field at the moment and it's so young still as well i think 5.9 is going to have some more full site editing developments and enhancements with it um but it is it's very early days one thing that i am excited about with full site editing is the theme.json mm -hmm. i think from a design perspective and from a development point of view theme.json can be very very powerful um, so i'm looking forward to, to diving in and trying out some different things with that but yeah um yeah very very different landscape in terms of templating and and how you go about building your sites potentially yeah it's it's targeted very much to um non coders i would say to make it easier for the general wordpress user base who aren't developers to actually build their own websites without needing to know any code so that you can literally create your header and footer file in the cms which is something you could never do before unless you downloaded some plugins that did that um, that functionality. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting, and there's going to be a lot of um, room for for growth um, and a lot of opportunities for developers in that FSE space. So yeah, I think we'll we'll be bringing you more as we learn it, and we'll go from there. Really. Yeah. So what you need to know in order to learn Gutenberg block development. Phil, do you want to just give us a summary of that? Yeah, sure. So I would always recommend a basic um, knowledge of modern JavaScript, so ES6 um, and above. Um, and of course, you're going to need to know React at the end of the day. Gutenberg is built on React. So I would get familiar with React and what props are, um, child props, um, state, that sort of thing. It's all going to come in super handy. Um, it depends how far you want to go with it. Obviously, there is elements of data management and Redux in there as well. But I would say to get you started uh, with the very basics of Gutenberg development, simply just JavaScript and React knowledge will probably uh, mm. take you a long way. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that rounds it up quite nicely. Um, so yeah, what's to come then? Um, we've 
pretty much touched on a lot of what's to come already but yeah um it's just going to be more around gutenberg block development and um starting from from nothing and moving all the way up to being advanced in um gutenberg block development and building your own multi-block plugins um and as well we'll be looking at fsc in a bit more detail in the near future anything to add to that phil no i think that covers everything but hopefully you guys will enjoy it and um you know be hanging around for the ride because uh, i'm looking forward to what's to come oh yes so yeah i mean we'd love to hear from you of course and um create a bit of a community around our channel of just kind of helping each other out sharing knowledge and asking questions really we're more than happy to help wherever we can if you want to reach out to us in the comments or on twitter um, we'll leave all of our the links in the description and our, our, our twitter handles and stuff like that so you can get in touch yeah absolutely um you know i think it's important to say as well you know we're definitely not claiming to be experts here we are just sharing knowledge as as we acquire it and as we learn some cool things about Gutenberg and just trying to fill some of the gaps of maybe where the documentation is currently failing, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to help you get up and running as well. So hopefully, as I said, it will work out really well for everyone and, and we're looking forward to having you along for the journey. So yeah, the last thing to say then is thanks for watching guys. Um, remember to like, subscribe and share. Um, because there's lots of content to come and yeah we want to take you on that journey so we'll see you in the next video guys take care see you in video too